Hey folks, when I started 3D printing, I was very unsure which printer to buy and what tools I need to get decent results. My choice and recommendation for the printer is still the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro, if you're searching for the best price to performance ratio. This machine is also much more beginner friendly than others, and somewhat future proof because it runs clipper that let you print at higher speeds, and it can handle a wide variety of different materials. You can see that my printer now does look a bit different because of all the upgrades and modifications I have made over time. I did a whole series showing that, and there is a link in the description if you are interested in this. As for the tools and accessories, I gradually bought these as I progressed in 3D printing. With most printers comes a set of tools to get you going right away. So you don't really need much more to start with. But over time, you will realize that certain operation and maintenance tasks can be quite tedious without the right accessories. And today I will start this small series showing you what tools and gadgets I use nowadays that make my 3D printing life easier. So feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of that. And this video is sponsored by my longtime partner PCBWay. They offer a wide variety of professional manufacturing methods like CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and also injection molding. You can simply upload your 3D file like this. You can choose the quantity and the material you want your parts made of, and you get an instant quote. If you need your parts professionally manufactured, PCBWay can do this for you. And now back to the video. To organize my 3D printing related tools, I printed this tool wall. It's called Multiboard, and it became my favorite storage solution for the kind of accessories I will show you in this series. Perhaps the most frequently used tool you will need from the beginning is the deburring tool. I use this one from Libration. It's a nice quality one and has a hand grip made of anodized aluminum. Of course there are cheaper alternatives made of plastic, but since I use this tool every day, I chose one that is more appealing to me, and I still enjoy using it until today. The blade does freely rotate 360 degrees and by pulling back this retaining ring, the blade can be swapped out easily. It comes with a whole set of blades for different materials. It works great, it's not expensive, and I think it also looks nice. There are various tools for removing support material, and I will go into these in more detail in part 2 of this series. But the tool I use the most, and you probably don't know yet, are these arterial clamps. They are somewhat delicate but surprisingly robust, and are well suited for pulling out support structures from all kind of holes and gaps. Even on tiny parts, they provide a firm grip that you can hold and adjust by this ratchet mechanism. At the point where you grab the material, they have these grooves so that nothing can slip away. These pliers are available in both straight and curved versions. Both are very useful and depending on the angle at which you want to grab something, sometimes one and sometimes the other is a bit more comfortable to use. If you have trouble removing hard to reach or fuse it supports, you'll be glad to have these clamps at hand. They also go by names like hemostatic forceps, and some might call them fish hook pliers. And now to something maintenance related. The threaded rods of the set axis and also the metal guide rolls of the print bed on the Neptune 4 Pro must be cleaned and greased regularly. It's a good thing that almost every new printer now comes with such sample packs of grease, and there is nothing wrong with using them. Some spots, like the rollers, can be a bit difficult to reach, and since the room where my printer is located is often a bit dusty, and the included grease attracts dirt like a magnet, I have been switching to this higher quality grease instead, and I use it with this applicator attachment. Both are from a brand called Finish Line, known for high-quality bicycle grease, which it is. But through its characteristics, it's also well-suited for 3D printers. 
Here it says it's with Teflon fluoropolymer, which is certainly a good thing. Its benefits compared to the included grease is that it is longer lasting, and it does not attract as much dust. Both resulting in me not having to do the cleaning and regreasing that often. And when I have to do it, it is very convenient because you can apply the small amount needed very precise, even on the hard to reach spots thanks to the pump attachment. Now let's talk about cutters. Something I use every day, and again, the included ones are okay, they will do the job, but as it is something that you will use all the time when 3D printing, you may be tempted to get something a bit more ergonomic. At least that's what I thought, and so I bought this one here. Not the highest quality like the ones made by Knipex, but much more affordable, and certainly an upgrade from the included ones. They have a proper metal spring, and more comfortable handles. I also use some other small pliers that come in the same design, that I use for post-processing, what I will show in the next video. Most such tools come in colors like shiny red, urine yellow, or vomit green, I like them in gray, but that's a preference thing, and probably not the most important. What is important is that you always start a print with a clean nozzle. To clean the outside of the nozzle, I use these brushes. They are great for removing filament residue and stay calm in different versions. Like this one made from copper, and I also have one made with these stainless steel brushes. I use the copper one for brass nozzles, and the stainless steel one when I go with nozzles made from hardened steel. By the way, I can highly recommend these 0.6mm high-flow nozzles. You can print even faster with them. And I haven't had a clocked nozzle since I changed to these. They are inexpensive and a nice upgrade to the standard 0.4 nozzles that come with the printers these days. I did a video about them a while ago, and link it in the description. I'm still super happy with these. And they are available for most printer models like Creality, Elegoo, Ampulabs and others. But as with all nozzles, at some point they will get some filament residue attached to it, and that can cause problems, especially at the first layers of your print. To get rid of that, you first go to the menu of your printer and heat the nozzle to the temperature that your filament runs while printing. Wait until the temperature is reached, and then give it a good brush until it's nice and shiny again. And the last thing I gonna show you in today's video, is how to get your printer connected to the Wi-Fi, so you can operate it from your computer or smartphone. Which is way more convenient to do. I mean, you can use your SD card to getting your 3D files on the printer, like a caveman. But if you do a lot of printing, it's way easier if your printer is connected to your network. And you can do things like upload 3D files, start, pause and stop prints, change settings and connect the camera to watch your printer from your computer or your phone. Bye bye SD card. The method I use works with all printers that have an Ethernet port. You just need a cheap Wi-Fi extender like that. This one is actually not available anymore, but I tried to find something similar and link it in the description. You just have to make sure that the Wi-Fi extender you get does have an Ethernet port to which you can connect it to the port of your printer. After your Wi-Fi extender is connected to your network, you can plug in the printer by the Ethernet cable. On the Neptune 4, there is even a short cable included, and that will work fine. Now you have to know the IP address of your printer. On the Neptune printer you will find that in the tab that says About Machine in the printer settings. You can then open your internet browser and just type in that exact number. That will get you directly to the fluid interface on which you can do all the fun stuff. That's it for this video. If you liked it please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you don't want to miss the other parts coming of this series. I wish you a nice day, 
and see you in the next one.